Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar News Update video. So this one is going to cover the schedule for San Diego Comic-Con, uh, just specifically the Avatar stuff that we have confirmed. So the Sunday schedule just came out, so we have the, the full schedule of the con. Uh, I'm not sure what the detail is on signings uh, as such, but we're going to focus in on just the specific uh, panel. So this year we have two Avatar specific panels. Uh, it is a Braving the Elements live panel and uh, Avatar Legacy. This is the publishing panel. So it's actually the same lineup as uh, previous years. So uh, that is to be expected. Obviously, the big thing here is probably like no Avatar Studios panel, but it's obviously very difficult to predict when that will actually happen. Um, definitely next year's Comic-Con is where I think there should be expectations for that to happen. Um, but let's get into this. So the description here is pretty basic. Uh, there's not too much to say about it, but it's going to be Thursday of the convention. So July 20th, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Benders Unite, uh, Avatar Braving the Elements, the official Avatar The Last Airbender companion podcast from Nickelodeon and iHeartRadio returns to Comic-Con for its third year in a row. Hosts Janet Varney, the voice of Korra, and Dante Basco, the voice of Prince Zuko, claim their honor alongside surprise panelists as they explore the deepest realms of the Avatarverse. Now... This is an interesting one for a, a few different reasons. One, Braving the Elements has not been officially confirmed for a third season. If you uh, follow this podcast, you will note that I think their last podcast that they released on their feed was in uh, May. And that was the last of four or five episodes that were just repeats of stuff that they've already done before. So their last new episode was the end of book two uh, back at the end of March. They have been waiting to get the confirmation, find out what the details are on if they're going to get their third season. Now, I think a lot of information has maybe suggested that this is going to happen. There's a weird point on one of the Avatar Generations live streams where like the host said that like they're not doing anymore, but I guess we'll find out here. I think even the fact that they're just doing one and they have the host back is kind of telling. So at the very least, there might be an expectation for this that they announce the third season officially here. Even though um, in terms of a full-on news perspective, that's not super interesting. But the reason there should be some interest in this panel, because otherwise, like, the, the majority of these panels live at the conventions are typically uh, very forgettable. Obviously, if you're there in person, kind of getting to interact with the voice actors and guests that they have, it's kind of cool. But from a pure news perspective, these that's not what these tend to be about. But interestingly, last year at Comic-Con, they actually started out the panel with this video. Janet Varney was not able to attend Comic-Con last year. So instead, she got this kind of uh, video intro to the panel that they showed there and immediately posted on all of their social medias. And obviously they got full on like Avatar Studios news here. They got to actually reveal that the first movie will be uh, focused on Aang and Friends. Now, it's obviously a very obvious piece of information, but it is official confirmation that that was the plan and given that some of the rumors were maybe suggesting um at the time that it might we might be starting off with something different this was actually kind of interesting that it uh, was revealed here now because of that it means there should be at least some sense of expectation that they say something at this panel because if you can say something you know three years before your project comes out What's the problem with saying a little bit more two years before your project comes out? Like, it, it, it would be weird if, if that's just the way that they do things, where they, they had news last year, they just have a year where they skip for no real reason. Now, am I expecting massive news? Not necessarily, but, you know, something along the lines of that. Like, can you... Are they going to officially, properly announce the leaked image that we've had from uh, the 2025 movie? Um, that would be a nice thing to show off to everyone officially, so like we don't have to be so kind of coy about it. It would be very cool if they could maybe announce what the name of the movie is or something like that. Um, just like have a even a small piece of news to show that, you know, it's still a bit early, but we've got something for you. Because otherwise, like, I'm not sure this is the panel necessarily to follow along with the, the whole way through. Um, 
just because they, it doesn't tend to be super news focused. Now, obviously, they have yet to announce the panelists, but um, I'm assuming it will be uh, mainly the so whatever avatar slash Korra voice actors they have at the convention, and they'll just kind of go from there. Now, the question obviously is going to be like, what if Mike and Brian are guests? Then all of a sudden there's the potential for this to be a little bit more important and maybe something actually gets said. But uh, if Michael Bryan aren't there, the, the likelihood probably goes down unless they have kind of key people that are we know for sure are involved in the, the movie like Laura Montgomery and stuff like that. That would maybe open it up a little bit. But beyond that, the expectation shouldn't, I think, be super high on this. It's the podcast panel. It's not the Avatar Studios panel. But they can't ignore that this happened. They can't ignore that this happened. Um, so there is that. Uh, and then the more obvious panel uh, on Saturday, so July 22nd from 12.30pm to 1.30pm, is Water, Earth, Fire, Air, continuing the Avatar legacy. So the description here says, Abrams Books, Star Wars Comics, Nickelodeon, and uh, Magpie Games are... Th are thrilled to treat fans to a panel worthy of the Avatar. Creators and writers of Avatar Last Airbender and Legend of Korra, including F.C. Yi, um, go on an exploration of the beloved world, moderated by Kara O'Neill, uh, who is the Vice President of Marketing for Dark Horse Comics. So, uh, that is not a huge lineup of people necessarily, but obviously I, I assume there will be more people there. But at the very least, that is a representative from magpie to a certain extent with the the author of the of the novels we've had so far and then Kara O'Neill who of course is the the moderator and will be the kind of dark horse uh, representative but I'm assuming they'll have some um creators from either I'm guessing the Azula comic or from the upcoming uh, Mako the the core comic so that's kind of th this is the panel where we actually have a little bit to kind of talk about because um going through the lineup of like we actually have four groups here so abrams books is obviously the publisher of the chronicles of the avatar novel so that is both kiyoshi novels both yang chen novels and potentially onwards so this is pretty obvious you know this panel will take place four days after the release of um the legacy of yang chen so fce immediately has a brand new uh, novel release to talk about um, now, the question is obviously going to be, I think, more from a news perspective, just based on spoilers. Will they say anything about what is next? Um, it feels very early. Uh, the, the question here is, I think, mostly going to be, are we going to get the same gap that we saw between avatars, that we saw between uh, Shadow of Kyoshi and Dawn of Yang Chen? Like, is it for sure a thing where, like, it takes a year of build-up to get to the next uh, kind of series of books? Or is it possible that we actually do have a novel coming next year as well? Because Avatar Studios forming and it kind of being there right in the middle of the two kind of book series is a kind of an interesting thing where you'd think that maybe they have a little bit more of a kind of pipeline prepared now that they better know what they want to do. Because again, remember, Chronicles of the Avatar was not a thing during the Kyoshi novels. That was only tagged onto Kyoshi after those books had both come out, after the box set of those two books had already come out. The, the, the fact that basically it kind of coincided basically with you know, announcing, kind of confirming that they will be continuing is a, a big thing. Uh, I, I think it's very obvious there will be more Chronicles of the Avatar books. The question is, will they announce them here at this panel? I'm not sure. Because there's the chance that there's a maybe the one big uh, marketing interview that FCE will do and he might confirm or deny something. Um, so we might know maybe heading in already what the uh, situation is, but it would be very cool if they talk about that. Otherwise, Abrams Books, I think, mainly just have, I guess, um, they have other products as well. So they have um, uh, Legacy of Yang Chen, of course. They have the four book box set that's coming out in, I think, October. So that's uh, both Kyoshi, both uh, Yang Chen books. So I assume they'll have that there. They'll probably show off the poster that we've seen already. Um, it's not super interesting, but, you know, maybe they'll show it again. Um, 
And they also have, I suppose it would coincide with Dark Horse, the calendar that's coming out for uh, basically next year. Uh, but it's released this year is um, uh, comics focused. So uh, maybe they'll mention that, you know, we do, we do have to keep in mind that this won't just be all about the big news. They'll cover the smaller things as well. And um, so Abrams Books is very, very clear cut. We'll get back to Dark Horse Comics. So what's Nickelodeon doing here? This was not in the description for last year. I, I, I went back and checked. It was just Abrams, Dark Horse and Magpie last year. So they've added in Nickelodeon as basically a publisher or I guess it would technically be the pseudo like Avatar Studios mention here but otherwise it is a publishing panel basically now my guess here is that this is to refer to books like um I Am Ang and some of those style books where they're not under one of the main publishers and they're just the sort of I guess scattered books that they're going to maybe just put under Nickelodeon um, how much they'll have to say about them I'm not entirely sure there's maybe the chance that there is something maybe bigger that comes out of this that they like announce a new range of books um, that they're doing with a you know themselves not with a different publisher so it's one to keep an eye on especially like if if maybe more of the people get announced and they have like someone from avatar studios like avatar studios publishing style thing and um, that that could be interesting now again they already have novels covered comics rpgs you know so it is kind of more the scattered other books that they kind of have to focus on but you know just something to keep an eye on because it is different than the description from last year Magpie Games are also going to be in a bit of an interesting uh, situation because um, this month they said the PDF for the Republic City book is coming out. So we don't know when exactly in the month that is going to be, but my assumption would be that probably we have it either like just before the con or they'll mention here that it's coming out like very shortly It'd be kind of cool if they maybe coincided it where like if it hasn't happened yet, they're like, you know, PDS will be going out like tomorrow or something like that. But, you know, I'm not sure if they can fully time that sort of stuff. But, you know, I assume they'll mention Republic City. Um, but I think if they have anything else to show, they, of course, can talk about the second uh, book, the second kind of what do they call it? Scenario kind of book, which is the... Um, Spirit World one. So again, these were the two initial ones that were already announced when the whole project of this was announced that there's going to be a Spirit World focus book, which is very important because um, the book that we have so far rarely mentions the spirits. And so explaining how that all works, and I assume there'll be a lore section on the spirits is going to be a very nice addition. But I think Magpie, after the success that they've had with the releases so far, um, definitely have the option here to maybe make some bigger announcements like I think they've definitely done well enough that you know I assume the kind of like the the agreement the relationship will continue and they will make more stuff related to the Legends RPG so everyone I think has already been asking for more eras like you know will they do Yang Chen's era will they do Wan's era that's something people really really want and it would be very cool if they could coincide that together. Like if they're doing the Spirit World uh, update, then Wands era feels like something that you could definitely add on with that. But hopefully they don't just talk about the really obvious stuff here. Because again, they mentioned some of this stuff at the conventions last year, both uh, SDCC and NYCC. And this is where we first heard about this stuff. So it would be a little bit frustrating if it's just we're celebrating the release of it, but we're not teasing what's actually happening afterwards. Um, and now we come around to Dark Horse Comics. So it's probably fair to say they have had a rough year. They really have not had a notable release this year at all. The Chibi comic has come and gone with uh, absolutely zero fanfare. The free comic book day book this year was the most forgettable thing imaginable. I've not seen a single other example of that book being discussed anywhere. Like I literally have seen nothing about it. And um, so they need to deliver. Now, obviously Azula in the Spirit Temple has this unfortunate thing where realistically, I think they probably expected that book to be out prior to uh, this con, but now it's not out until the end of October, November. Will they explain the delays? I, I probably not. Will they show preview pages? That's certainly possible. Um, 
it would fit in line with kind of the timing of kind of things and the fact that there have been delays full color preview pages because as far as I'm aware the book is done so um there should be nothing holding them back from kind of teasing that directly but I do think on the avatar side of things they really should be telling us what's next for avatar because we don't know it's a comic trilogy I think there's a there's an assumption that the avatar comics are coming back with an avatar uh, comic trilogy but they haven't said that so um it would be nice to get the more concrete example of like what is the plan is it just a solo comic about maybe like May or something like that? Tai Lee, Sokka? Are, are we in our... Are we just doing one shots? Is that all Dark Horse can do? Because there's stuff like, you know, we don't know, like, say, um, Dark Horse. Are they allowed to do a comic where it's about Kyoshi? Because, like, you know, if the books are done with Kyoshi, then surely that's an option uh, during the huge open periods of Kyoshi's life for Dark Horse to do comics. But we don't know what's happening there. Um, so are we just in one shots? So I'd like to get that confirmation. But the big thing that uh, Dark Horse absolutely need to talk about. And it's uh, this is where I'll open up uh, this. So this was mentioned at Comic-Con last year. They, they, they mentioned that, you know, more Legend of Korra comics are on the way. A new trilogy. Creators include Kiku Hughes and Alexandria Monique will begin in 2023. Now. It is becoming, it, it, it feels all but confirmed. There's no way the first one of these books is hitting this year. But if that was the plan, then you should for sure a year on be able to tell us about what's happening here. So uh, the Mako comic, which was uh, what they confirmed later on at New York Comic Con, um, that's what the first one is about. The first part of this one-shot trilogy is going to be about Mako you need to announce that so i think we need to see a cover because again they did the the reveal of like the azula comic at um comic-con last year where they actually showed it off and stuff like that they need to do something similar with the mako comic but i also feel they need to do um a bit more than that now i can't see them announcing the second one uh, as well but it would be nice if they maybe had the cover here but then just said what character it was up next because I think at this point it's becoming clear that, yeah, it's going to be like early 2024 at earliest. Because otherwise, like if they're still sticking to this, this is like, this has to be a, like a December release if, if it is going to still be 2023. But at this stage, it's probably more like February, <laughs> if even that. So uh, we're waiting to see all that stuff come together. Um, and then, yeah, Beasts of the Four Nations. They need to talk about it. Um, uh I don't know, like, it feels like we're a little bit helpless as a fandom when it comes to this book in terms of, like, what can we do to get them to address it? Um, we just have to hope that this is finally the time when it's the book is ready and they, they'll finally talk about it. Because um, I think they need to make some announcements. They, like I said, they have very little on the schedule. Yes, there is still, you know, the Azula comic. Yes, there's uh, the Imbalance Omnibus they still have. Um beyond that like is there the potential for anything else um yeah like uh, another kind of uh, team avatar tales slash uh, patterns in time type book because uh, there are some free comp with day books that are kind of out on their own that do need to be collected so um another short story collection would be something that's kind of interesting um but i don't know i i just feel like at the bare minimum, it is the Korra comic. This is the one thing that they just absolutely, no question, have to do. And it will be a massive, like, huge disappointment if they they don't talk about it here. Because uh, it suddenly turns what they said here into a lie very, very quickly. Because, like, December, the, the solicitations for books for December, like... Either it's it's this month or next month. I, I forget the exact details. So there's very little opportunity for like this to actually still be true, and so they need to give an update on it. Um. So yeah, that is a Comic Con for Avatar, basically. Um. We just have to kind of hope that uh, it delivers here. Um. It's it's a frustrating one though because of course you know we are deep into the kind of what second year of uh, Avatar Studios and um, because you know the uh, Avatar Studios was announced in kind of February 2021 so wait actually yeah we're, we're we're into like the third year technically and it's just, it just doesn't feel like we're at all 
there yet. So, I don't know. Uh, for this first one, like, I, I just hope there's, they have something. I, I'd like to just hope they have something, some sort of a statement to say about Avatar Studios. If they just go ahead and do their standard panel, it's like, okay, fine. But it's boring. Like, I, it's not fun to, like, watch from, like, home expecting news when you just get these really kind of dull standard panels that is basically a fan panel, but now happens to be official. Like, the, like the, that is the way a lot of these uh, kind of podcast fa- panels often feel, uh, rather than feeling anything special. Whereas at least the publishing panel, like, has a sense of, like, yes, we're maybe in full-on marketing mode, but that's what we need. <laughs> we, we need some stuff to get announced. Um, uh, so that is the kind of uh, the hype uh, that we're kind of dealing with here. So... Uh, yeah, definitely the Saturday panel is the one that uh, I think there'll be much more focus on um, in the sense that like, you know, probably like some live tweets are going to happen about this one. It'll be the more kind of fun one to follow along. This one, I kind of feel like we'll know immediately kind of going in the second it starts if we're doing anything or not. So uh, yeah, th- they're my uh, thoughts heading into Comic-Con. It's obviously not too far away, like, at all. Like, what, we're only 11 days away from this first panel here. Um, so it's, a, like, only a week and a half, basically, away. So we'll be here sooner uh, than we expect. So in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are on the panels that we have announced for uh, Comic-Con 2023. But that has been the video. Thanks for watching, and bye.